Uh, this may be a, a repeat of a little bit of what we've seen, again on the subject of uh, recasting, this time from the perspective of who and mostly uh, the Silly Hat Brigade and those FAs. So consider the following. Uh, he just keeps moving there, that's great. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is largely going to be a presentation of questions that you may ask yourself uh, when you're running a recast um, along the way, things that you may want to decide. This is a set of arguments, perhaps, that we had in our meetings, uh, our final decisions, and kind of the, the options that you may choose uh, to do differently. So we are the Who hosts. I'm Jet Jones, representing the Silly Hat Brigade and Los Jefes. We also had a hand in Snap 6 and 8. Um, and specifically, I'm going to be talking about Who. Uh, this hopefully will be helpful to other game control groups. The main things that we're going down, instead of finding a partner team, uh, deciding when your events are going to be recast, uh, deciding if you're going to change your applications in any way because you're doing a recast, and then things that uh, come up once you actually start handing over the details. All right, step one. You're wanting to run a recast, probably want another team to help you recast. That's, that's a good step. Um, however, you have the small problem that your event is still secret, and you're probably keeping it secret because you're not anywhere near done. So in order to sell such a thing, what do you do? Um, you could ask the people you already know. You could go through GC contacts. You could try a public mailing list. I got some advice before the talk began to not use um, uninvolved images, but that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of Bill Nye interstitials here to give you a little chance to think. Also a little Seattle flavor. Anyway, what we did, not that important. Didn't work that well, just kind of stumbled across a partner team by kind of doing some things incorrectly. However, the good news is we have some good answers. The Puzzle Cabal, through Jeff Wallace, Curtis Chen, and Brent Holman, have agreed to expand their sphere of secrecy, if that's a thing. Um, <laughs> that they will, um, you can go to them if you want to have recasters rerun your event, or if you're just looking for an event to recast, uh, use their networks. Puzzle Hunt Calendar is, has all their addresses and ways to contact and good information, so uh, small note at the bottom, this is good advice. The rest of this talk, you're going to have to uh, take on your own. Next up, you found another team. You want to decide when you're going to run the event. So clearly, you could simulcast it, uh, run it the same weekend, or you could recast it later. Um, and as a follow-up question with your team, do you want to let them in immediately to what you have? Do you want to use them as a full beta test team? Or do you want to just let them run through the event? So while well, we think about that, it's a question of time. <laughs> Still, no, I would add. probably not important. OK. You may have noticed that Who ran a recast. Um, surprise. Uh, this had a lot of benefits for us. Um, it let us, for the most part, focus on our event first. Um, wasn't quite done when we found recasters. We are just filling in the last few puzzles. So having more people at that point wouldn't have helped us um, get things locked down. It might have been you know, frustrating trying to do all the construction on things that weren't done. Um, again, it let us push the cost of constructing the second event and finding logistics and that kind of thing uh, to a later date, which felt very good to us at the time. Um, also, you'll have feedback before the second running that you can use to improve. Um, and as a negative, of course, there's going to be a, a delay of secrecy. Kind of sad that there are very few blog posts about the Seattle running of uh, who. Uh, the Facebook group is excellent, but no, no full write-ups for me to enjoy. Um, and the, the second half of the question, what do you do with your recasters? Uh, letting the recasters play in our book was a bribe. It was good for them, it was a lot of fun, um, and it also gave kind of a crash course in the entire game all at once. Um, easier to focus when you're in competition and you get to see all the puzzles and kind of see from a player's perspective what you think is important. All right, next up, applications. So you know who's running the event, when you're running it. Now you have to let the world know uh, that you have an event. However, with two dates, you have a little bit of a choice here if you're going to run one application and have it due at the same time for both locations, or if you're going to split up the application across two due dates, or if you're just going to run two totally different applications. And while you think about that, <laughs> Bill Nye has a glue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We chose to do one application with two dates. Uh, the easy answer is you only have to run, uh, write one set of puzzles for 
running the same application twice, which made our lives and our recasters' lives much easier. Um, having two separate due dates allows for less of a delay between when a team applies and when they actually run for the, the event that's going to be run second. Um, and this, this last note is just that we spent maybe a meeting or two arguing if the, the teams at the later date would be able to use the extra time to put more time in their application and do this killer thing, and, you know, conquer the world, and then present it to us on video. And it turns out um, game teams are very smart. <laughs> They're not going to use probably more than half of a weekend, regardless of how much time <laughs> they have. So um, I'll put down uh, hard cash, maybe one dollar, that this will never actually be a problem. <laughs> And another thing we wanted to bring up is for our events for the full weekend, we didn't actually fill up. Um, we had a good amount of things to do in the application, um, but ended up not rejecting a whole lot of teams. So that may be a sign that the applications don't need to be quite so rigorous. Um, and you know, take that with a whole bunch of additional bullet points. You know, it's, it can be fun. You can bond with your team. You can end up with a video to watch later and enjoy how goofy you look with soft puppets. Oh, sock puppets. <laughs> um, and anyway, on the balance, uh, talking about applications and kind of what you want to get out with them, get out of them, could be a whole, whole separate talk. All right, everything else is done. Now you have the meat of the recasting sandwich. Okay, <laughs> um, you actually have to hand off all of the materials to your second team. Um, so you've got. More than these two choices, a whole continuum, as, as Corey already said, of what you want to do. You can, again, just release your puzzles and say, go do what you want with these. Or you can say, we ran the event, we made these decisions, do it this way. Bill Nye <laughs> <laughs> seems to be on the authoritarian side. I, I don't know about that. Anyway, our, our original decision was to be as hands-off as possible. Um, again. There's going to be a lot of work for the recasting team when they're finding logistics. Um, and just to, to recognize that and allow them to fill in the details that we're not going to see from a distance and have the freedom to change things as necessary seemed like the right trade-off. Um, recasters are also very smart people. Smart people do very well without someone telling them how to do every single detail of your puzzle event. Um, and at the same time, as part of sharing, the original GC has a lot of context that hasn't made it into any of the documentation. So being there to communicate, to answer emails, to um, kind of adjust and edit, and just kind of continuously be there to support the event as you go. Um, materials, again, were already mentioned. Uh, shipping is a lot easier because you've already built the expertise to build the things the first time. Of course, in some cases, you may have destroyed the puzzle by throwing it into the ground and having the dice and glass and everything explode, in which case, instructions about how to buy and recreate these things are going to have to be good enough. This goes on for a while. Um, again, there were some points where the handoff could have gone better. Um, we came later into the event to find that things had changed, which was a little bit of a surprise on our side. Um, again, this was maybe having to do it again. Uh, setting expectations a little more towards the middle of saying, yes, you have freedom of the puzzles, but we want to know what's happening. Um, and again, setting expectations and feedback is going to be the, the better conclusion of these things. But hey, the first one, you don't want to see this part, you want to see me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so what you're handing off is a mountain of data. You've got the puzzles themselves, you may have earlier versions. Um, you've got your puzzle bible or playbook that describes how things are getting run. Um, plus you've got just a whole mountain of notes from the puzzle event itself, as well as logistics. Um, so it's with this mountain of data, it's nice to have a map for the new team to say, these are the high points, these are what you're actually going for. Like, this, this is our plot. Uh, you apply to be in the guild, you're in the guild, you get screwed by the guild, and then you go and beat the guild up. Those are the things that you need to hit, now go do it. Um, and again, just feedback notes, what was important to keep, what was worth changing, what was broken. Um, and again, using the original authors as proofreaders uh, hits a lot of these points just by default to say, we've made this change, we've made this adjustment, what do you guys think? Um, and totally separate note that logistics tends, you, you would originally think that 
you've run it once, the locations have all changed, the people running things have all changed, but it's still very important to, to have and to highlight the notes of how long things took, what went over, what went short. Um, it ends up being, no matter how much you change, the puzzle itself seems to take up a similar amount of time. All right. One last note here, um, we had our, our puzzle bible and all of its very important notes, um, playbook, there may be other words for it, um, but a lot of things ended up being this note, ask the author. So if something goes wrong, if you need more hints, if you need an extra copy of the puzzle, just go ahead and call up the author, which turns out not to be as great a piece of advice if the author is a couple thousand miles away in Hawaii with no cell phone. Um, so we had to do a pass over our handbook um, before we passed it off, and sometimes after we passed it off, to fill in these details. Uh, so, and not that there's anything wrong with this the first time, like you're creating a puzzle event, you're optimizing your own time, so if you didn't need that the first time, you probably didn't need it to, to finish the event, but in handing it off, all these details become relevant. All right, so some final notes. Puzzle Hunt Calendar, now with more superpowers. Uh, work, don't get us wrong. You're still gonna have a lot of work to do for the recast. Logistics, as we said, is pretty much equal in re recreating all of these things. Um, plan, make decisions, um, make some agreement of what you're going to hand off, what the feedback mechanisms are, how you get into contact with people if things go wrong. Adapt, things are going to go wrong even to the point of while running the event itself, but you just need to be, you need to have enough background to know what the next best thing is and what else you can do. Um, and trust, because at the end of the day, we're running an event for teams, teams want to have a good time, you want to have a good time, everyone is on this same page, so go with the flow a little bit and the event should work out. Bill and I uh, salute everyone. Yes. <laughs> uh, and this is our email contacts if you have a question that comes up after this short Q&A session, but now we're open here. Uh, uh, my name is Kevin Clary. I don't know how to do this thing, so bear with me. Um, I just wanted to say I was a fellow GC with Jet, and I was really happy with the way uh, when we finished. So thanks to my team. I also wanted to thank Blood and Bones because they were awesome and did a really great job rehosting, and that was very cool of them. Um, I have more of a question. Too. What? What? Long shots too. Oh, long shots. Excuse me, I forgot them. I didn't mean to. Um, the entire crew was really nice, and they were awesome. So. Um, I more wanted to actually pose a question to the rest of the puzzle community. Uh, so, haha, -ha, turn about. Um, the event, the event had a very secret, uh, dependent reveal, and we were thrilled to death that we kept the secret up until the first run, which of course was the big reveal on midnight on Saturday. Um, and then we kind of were resigned to the fact, that, yeah, this is what, six months or five months, uh, between the first run and second run, there was no way that that secret could be kept, but we asked anyway. Um, and somehow it was kept, and it seemed like everyone who played the second weekend was as surprised. And so I wanted to just ask the puzzle community, like, well, thank you, and also, do you think it was the Facebook group, and is this something we could try to get other people who have a big secret they want to keep, and they're doing a recast, is that the right release valve? Um, so, I don't know, if you want to send me an email or discuss at some point, I would be really interested. So, thanks. Okay, we have a question on this side from Alan. I was uh, intrigued, surprised that you were considering a recast before you'd even run it the first time, that you kind of had that built in from the start. I, I, I couldn't even imagine thinking about a recast. I, I just want to get the game off the ground. <laughs> what, I, what I got from the question was mostly, we were thinking about a recast before the actual run, and that that was vaguely surprising. And it, it was, um, but I think a lot of it was, uh, a lot of what, was, what we were thinking was that there were going to be more people than we could handle in a single weekend, and that we were going to have trouble um, booking a lot of our sites multiple weekends in a row, so it would be nice to have a recast and nice to move it to the Bay Area to share it in that way. Um, I don't think we were as locked on you know, how that was going to actually happen. It was more a, wouldn't it be nice? And then, you know, we got 
got a lot of assistance kind of as soon as applications opened up and we actually had a lot more communication with other teams that recasting was going to be um, totally possible. Uh, yep. Hey, Jeff, I'll catch up for Jeff. Uh, I just, this is related. I was curious if you had a sense of how the existence of the recast affected application count. Did, if there was no recast, would you, do you think you would have had to have turned a lot of people away? Do you think a lot of people from the Bay Area would have come up for the game? Do you have a sense of how that played out? You're going to have to repeat that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the question was uh, how having a recast affected the application count? Um, and I tried to touch on this a little bit in where applications trailed off. Uh, so yes, I feel like we would have turned away a lot more teams, um, and I feel like we, we were making the decision consciously to want as many people to play and enjoy our event as possible, um, because I think, you know, upwards of, you know, but, by the original deadline, we had upwards of 30 teams who were curious about one or both events. Um, and a lot of teams that were saying, because we had already opened up the option, that yes, they were more interested in playing in the Bay Area for convenience. Um, so yes, more Bay Area teams would have flown up if it was the only option. Um, and yes, we would have turned away more teams if we hadn't uh, done the recast. <laughs>